Hello, hello. Hi, guys. How's everybody doing today? I'm uh, having hot flashes. It's hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold. Hello, Camille, Rita, Byron. Hello, hello, Nancy. Hello, everybody. So I'm alone today. Hello, June. I'm alone today, but um, Han is going to join me on Fridays. Potentially, uh, I'll be in the hot seat, but she's going to just come to chat, you know. Let's see who's popping in here. The names are flowing in. Donna, hi, hi. Kim, hello. Lou, Kathy, hello. Fabiola, hi, Lynn. Amy, hello, and Beth. Hello, everybody. So I know I'm very aware that Halloween is upon us, but I'm trying to get through that uh, 101 cutter set by Wilton. <laughs> and so I'm just doing, um, I'm grabbing cutters out of there and just doing, the, you know, different designs. So here, if you guys aren't aware, Han and I came up with this subscription where every month you're getting um, a little bundle of tools. And so if you want to check that out, the link is in the description box there uh, or pinned at the top comment. And so today, here, let's do a little recap. So last month I did this spooky house, then Han did these really cute pumpkins. Last Friday I did some dinosaurs and today football. I thought football. I know football is very, very popular for all of my American cookie friends. Hello, Maria. Hello. Hi, Camille. You joined us live today. Petrina, hello. Chicago. Oh, Aubrey. I was going to say Audrey. I'm sure you've heard that many times. Jennifer, hello. Ashley, Gail. Hello, hello, hello. Bobby Girl, Kim, Rhonda. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. Yes, June, some football. Okay, so let me just uh, turn on the other camera. And which one is it here? This is it to start? Is it give me some problems to start cam? Oh, there it is. All right, so there they are. Okay, now the cutters here. Let's start with the cutters. So here they are. They're you know the the Wilton cutters. I find they're a nice party size. They may be you know for a kid portion. They're a little bit big, I find, but uh, they're really nice. Like if you're doing a platter. So the football, I've used it for other things. I used it as a support on that uh, haunted house. Here, let me pop it up. This one, I used the football to stand up the cookie as a base. And the trophy obviously could be used for any for a baking competition as the prize, anything. The trophy's super cute. And then the football helmet, there's a baseball cap also in that uh, 101 set. So those are the cutters. That uh, football is also would be great, a pedal to make a poinsettia a platter. And I used it recently to make a leaf. So when you guys have questions, pop them in and I'm going to work a little bit and then read, you know, since I can't see uh, and work at the same time. So let's go from, I guess, easiest to hardest, I suppose. So here is the football cookie. Okay. Hello, Angie. The butter's on sale. I had the butter on sale last week, but I didn't make it out. I forgot and got sidetracked and didn't end up getting the sale. Anyway, I don't buy that much butter since I only make a few cookies for the, for the videos. Okay. So let's examine this. If you guys are beginners. Oh, I forgot my needle. Okay. Excuse me. Just one second. Sorry, guys. Okay, so um, if you look at the cookie, if you're new to cookie decorating, you'll see there's like a little line there in the middle. So that is done by you flood this area, let it dry a little bit, and then you do this area or vice versa. And that creates this little kind of separation there. And it gives it the look of a real football because of that little kind of stitch, you know? 
Now you can always decide the level of detail you're gonna do on a cookie because obviously every little detail takes more time. And so time is money, right? So if you're wanting to crank out and you know, are you donating these cookies? What are you doing, you know? And we talked about last live about getting business. So let's say your child is on a sporting team like this, you could make a couple of cookies, you know, occasionally, and people will see them at the practice and stuff like that. Okay, so this is a ball. I don't like to do super straight lines when I'm working on things that are supposed to be rounded. So we're just going to, I'm starting here. This is brown made with the purple and the orange. And you see here, I'm just following the curve of that outline curve so that it's not a straight line dead center. I find that when you do super straight lines on something that's supposed to be right, it just doesn't look as, as right. That makes sense to you guys, okay? And so my icing is what we call dual consistency, which means this one's actually probably runnier than dual, but it means that you can pipe and outline flood, I mean, at, with the same icing. You don't have to have two bags. That was, uh, you know, the beginnings of cookie decorating before, like, you know, everybody needs to work faster. There, there's been so many innovations, if you can say, in cookie decorating. And so this hybrid icing where you don't need to prepare two bags is a huge time saver. Okay, so now you have that initial area. And so you're going to let that dry a little bit and then you're able to flood the other side and then you get these two really nice uh, sections. So here is the football all done, the magic of the internet. And now I have my white icing. Now on this cookie here, I used a ribbon piping um, tip to create this little strap there on either side. So you can use a basket weave tip that you just have upside down. It's about half, half, and, and you can add a little, like the purple is what darkens it. So you do your orange and then add the purple little by little and you'll see. If you go like too much, it goes more like sort, like a grayish color, like a, like almost black even. Okay, so here is the two white lines on either side. And again, I don't like them super straight. You want to, this is a ball. So I'm just kind of like curving towards the outside there. And you go about the width you want to have it. Now I'm doing it with a round tip, but if you have the strap or the basket weave, that works great. And, and now I'm just my icing. I don't want it too runny because I need to do this here. And so if my icing is very runny, you're not going to get an as polished line. The lines get, um, I don't know, they're just a little bit, they look, um, what am I trying to say? Like almost like uh, not sharp, you know, like it's out of focus. The lines are not super polished. Right here for the stitch, again, not straight, following the curve of the ball and just adding these little lines across. Now this little line that goes over the first line might need a little tap on the head because like I say, the icing is not stiff, but it's stiffer than flood. And so you just want it all to lay flat on the cookie. If it stays up in the air, it's more susceptible to break it if you're planning on stacking or packing cookies. And so if you put them in a bag and the icing is kind of floating in the air, well, it's more likely to crack if it's not connected to the bottom. Okay. And just like that, you have a little football. Now this would essentially be um, two colors and you could just make a platter of footballs. You don't have to go, you know, make a ton of different uh, designs. You can just do this. If you're having a little watch party or something at your house. Hey, Han. Hello, hello. Hello, Eva. Hi, Sally. All right, and so another little thing if you want, I'm barely touching the surface of the icing, barely squeezing and just adding some little dots. And uh, it's totally optional. I just find that it adds a little something. It is it is a slightly 
boring design. I mean, it's not super, uh, you know, crazy. So it just adds a little, and if you wanted, you could airbrush depending on how many tools you have. But here you can see the difference between, I'm gonna try to zoom in here. You can see the difference between using the strap typing tip or the belt basket weave. And then here, just the, the round tip. That's pretty much the same kind of look. And so there are the footballs, okay? Let me adjust the focus there. Hold on. There. Finally, make me have a heart attack. All right, sorry guys. I apologize. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. I, I don't know. I don't know why it happened. Okay. So like I was saying, I'm trying to get my train of thought back. Um, the football helmet, I really was not inspired. My kids never really played football and I couldn't visualize it. So I went on the internet and looked at clip art. And that's a great way to kind of get a gauge or direction if you're not sure about a design. So I'm using really neutral colors because you guys, you know, you can do whatever your team or whatever it is. And here I'm just outlining the edge like that would go around the face. And this area here, there's like a little bump out. And I'm just adding this in black and I'm tapering it over to the ear section here. Like so. You can see here there's like a little bump. And so this is kind of like the area that's surrounding the the face. Oh, awesome. I just got crystal clear. That's that's what we want. Okay, so now I'm just flooding this whole little area that is close to the face there. Okay. Just like that. And then your icing, you can just shake your cookie. And that little shaking helps the icing self-level that, that motion, that agitation. Okay. And then there's like a little hole where here area is. I'm just adding that. And then I'm just outlining the whole helmet. And there. Now I'm adding white icing where the cage is, the face protection. Just, it's not really part of the decoration, but it's just to bring up this area so that when I do add the cage section, that it's at the height of the helmet because if you don't add this area well the piping line is going to fall right it's going to fall off the helmet and it's going to look a little weird so the point of this white icing is only to raise up this area so that all this is at the same height if that makes sense to you guys so when i pipe the cage the face protection here well, it'll be level with the helmet, okay? And so you want to get that um, peeled up. And you can look at your colors for your, your favorite team or whatever. And the logos are often on the side of the helmet, but it's a really small area. So you want to let this crust a little bit. And then this one here is ready. I'm working in blue. I actually Googled the most common color for football and it is blue. And the most common um, critter is an eagle for football. I Googled that, it was like considerably more, but an eagle, you can look at the logos. It's quite um, a detailed thing. So you wanna simplify. And now I'm just gonna add this whole helmet area in blue and you can do whatever color you Want. You can maybe do two colors depending. So I'm connecting to the black here. Just like that. And you see that this line here that I did in black gets pretty much hidden when you fill with the colored icing. So I'm just doing the whole thing here. Okay. And you want to make sure you're connected to the black area. Let's give it a little shake. And now, while this is wet, 
I'm actually going to add a little white circle so that if you do want to add a logo, so here, it's easier if you just start squeezing and expand to make a round, okay? If you try to draw around, it won't be round. What I just did is you squeeze and it spreads essentially, and that makes a much more perfect circle than if you were to try to draw a circle. And now I'm gonna just grab the cookie and shake it. And I have this self-love thing that happens. Okay. And there we have our and so here we have this pristine white area. You can stencil a small logo or you can do whatever you want in that circle and initial. All right, let me go here. Yeah, I thought I was pretty good. <laughs> I was like freaking on my head, but I was pretty good. Thanks, Sally. Hi, Cynthia. No, these are uh, Wilton, that 101 cutter set, Sally. Okay, now let's look at the cage for the, the helmet. So, oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to show you guys. So we're gonna work on the cage a second, but I just wanna show you here. Now look at these two circles. So this circle, this circle I did exactly like the one you guys just saw, okay? See that? It's all flush. This one was piped on top. You can see there, it's like a bump on top. So it's really up to you. These you could actually make in advance on um, parchment paper and you know decorate them if you need them to be a little bit fancy and then just pop them on the helmet. But I just wanted you guys to see the difference. You see, if you let the icing fall in and you get this really smooth surface or you get this bump. So it's not, you know, it's just different. I just wanted to show you guys the different effect, okay? And now for the cage. So you can see now why this white is important. You see it raises up the cage area and it just fits nicer. If it wasn't there, this would the icing would have to go down so that it, you know, is all kind of white. Thanks, Fabiola. Okay, so let's do the cage now. I think that's what it's called. In hockey, that's what they call it. Okay, so I'm gonna go about here. And I'm just following the shape here. There. And then another line in the middle. And this is like a simplistic version of them, but like I said before, every line takes time. So if you can simplify your designs, you will be able to make more cookies and make more money, right? And so here are the two. And you can airbrush some shading. Like I say, you could put a little logo. Um, if it's a child's birthday, you could put a number or the child's numbers. That would be an easy one. If you're like the team, you could do numbers on the helmets. That's somewhat easier than the logos. The logos are pretty... Um, they're pretty detailed often, right? Okay, now the trophies. So let's take a look at the trophy. Here it is. Now, this is a football set. That little trophy would work for so many other things. Let me look here. Kim's writing. See, an arrowhead's not too bad. That's probably one of the easier ones, but the tigers and lions and eagles and all these other things, the big. The bear, I think the bear is one of the critters that would be somewhat okay, but okay. So there it is. So oh, it's a face mask. See now when I hear face mask, though I'm thinking, you know, the COVID mask. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. There's different versions of the eagle. Some of them, I, I was looking, they're just the head. So it's like not too bad with the beak. It's when you have the wings and all that, you know, then it gets a little tricky. All right, so we're, we're visualizing for this guy here. So this, see this curve? We're visualizing, so we're not filling in the handles. And then we're breaking this up here, okay? Now you don't have to mark it up. I'm just marking it up for you guys to see. Thank you. 
So now I, I'm working in two consistencies. So again, if you guys, some of you are beginners, you'll hear the word consistency probably the most in cookie decorating. So here, the handles here, if you look at them, they're different than this smooth icing. And that's done with thick icing squeezed through a piping tip that's the star shape. And so the icing comes out, but it needs to be thick enough to hold all those nice lines. So this is a thicker icing here, thicker icing at the top and bottom to maintain those little dots. And then obviously flood icing all here so that it levels and gets all nice and smooth. So I'm working in the same color, but different consistencies. So here I'm doing a part of the trophy since it's not touching the top part at the top. And I wanted, since it's all one color, I was trying to get some detail through you know, creating these sections to try to make it look a little bit more realistic. I mean, I can think of horse jumping. I mean, so many occasions, this is really the most um, for any, I mean, maybe your kid is in a science fair. I mean, anything these would be great for, you know? And now I'm just following the curve of the cup area here like that and then we're just flooding all this so that it self levels now when you're working with a tipless bag you've cut a hole in the tipless bag and once it's cut well you you can't glue it back together so if you cut a big hole so that your icing comes out quick that's great depending on what you're working on but let's say you don't have a lot of tipless bags remember you're not going to be able to piece it back together so it is annoying to squeeze icing out of a tiny hole if you have a lot of cookies to do. But just think about that if you if you get a limited amount of piping bag. Like in my case, I'm working on five cookies. So I can muscle through. But if you have a hundred, prepare two bags. Have a detail one and a flood one so that you can work more efficiently. This is not reasonable. This does not make sense. This is not um, you know just going to make you crazy all right so you can see how it's, it's it should heal but it's because it came out of such a tiny hole that it holds all those like ripples right so we're going to shake it to get all that to go away and that agitation like i said it's like just helps it self-level now you can make this color with just a little bit of black. You can make this color with just a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue. You just want to have a little bit of pigment so that when you add the, the pearl that you get a nice background. If you don't have some color and you're spraying, let's say, white icing, well, your silver is going to look very um, washed out. It's not going to be like like this it's not going to be like you know intense it's going to look very blah all right let me see here carla thank you yes you can add a very small amount of black and you'll get the grit just to give it some backing when you put on the metallic color Yes, okay, so that hole that you're talking about, um, do you swirl your needle around to kind of like help the icing really like sink and, and take out any potential air pockets out? That often it's because your icing is too runny and so it's not to hold air, you know, that like you whip the meringue and you introduce air so if your icing is too, got too much liquid, well, it can't hold the air anymore, so you'll get the creator, and you need a thicker icing. The thicker icing requires a little fiddling. You have to kind of, like, help it heal, but that's what, um, like, will help it not cave. Here, I see it has an air pocket. I'm just going to, I popped it, and I'm going to shake it to see if I can get that to heal again. So the icing dries from the outside in. So the outside gets like a like an eggshell. And then slowly, you might think it's dry, but it's not. As soon as you press on it, you'll crack that outer area. 
So you have to wait if you're going to stack or package overnight before you start packaging your cookies. And National Boss Day. These would be cute if you like your boss. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, you have to watch out. Don't, don't get too excited with the shaking. Um, can you get the same color effect if you do a yellow for gold? Yes, but try not to have like a, like a super lemon yellow. Like you want to have like an egg yolk yellow, a golden yellow. Add a little bit of orange maybe to it or brown to uh, tone it down. Like if you have like banana yellow and you spray it with the gold, it's going to look a little off. <laughs> you don't want to launch the needle tool. I do, yeah. You do, yes. Um, swirl it around. Is that the yes? Then maybe try to have your icing a little thicker for the next batch. For the, for the icing where you know you're going to be doing that type of detail, try it. The 16th, a Sunday for boss day. You're not even going to see them. No problem. Hello, Amy. All right, so we're going to let this one crust. I've got another one here that's ready to go, and you can see there. And again, for this area right here, I'm adding a dot just to connect the two areas. You see, and it gives it just a little bit more of an interesting thing than if I would have just flooded the whole area. It's kind of, you know, it just gives it a little something, something. And then here at the bottom, straight line across like that. And then I'm gonna flood this whole bottom area. And again, if you're using a small tip, it is tedious. Adjust depending on how many cookies you have to do. So if you guys don't have your supplies yet, you can check out our Global Belly store for the subscription of our cookie toolbox every month you get a new batch of tools to get you ready for your cookie adventure so it's always different stuff every month next month the silver spray that i'm using is included not silver it's actually pearl but it looks silver when you spray it on um, this color okay next is the dot there in the center so i'm just again I'm not drawing a circle, I'm building the circle in that I'm squeezing and just kind of jiggling my piping tip in the middle so that I get this dot and then you can kind of like expand your icing. You don't want it to be super high, right? So you just kind of rotate your needle in there and you see it kind of spreads it out and self levels. Then you get this cute little dot. Another thing you could do is use an M&M type thing if you want, and then it'll add a little punch of color right there, and you'd instantly get a spot to write your number one, number two, whatever, a star. Thank you, good vibes are awesome. Thank you, Sally. I'm making it, I told you it was easy. Yes, you for the little dot, you could do a transfer. Okay, so now this is pretty much it with regards to um, having the, the flood icing. Now I'm gonna grab, because my star tip has crusted over. So this is the same color, okay? But this icing is actually um, thicker, okay? And so right here on the edge, I'm drawing a C right here. So I'm on top of that first little area and I'm just along the edge of the cookie and then here, stop and then so you're just adding a c now this piping tip might be a bit big for this particular application as i looked at it but i mean it looks fine you don't have to my other piping tip was maybe a bit small but my icing is dry in it it's not long when you leave it laying around it the icing gets gets hard in the piping tip and you have to rinse it out. And now I've switched it out the star to a little round and I'm just adding a little bead border right at the edge of the trophy. 
Okay, and then at the bottom, and I'm not even waiting for the flood to dry because the icing's so thick, it's not, it's going to hold. And then here, I'm adding two S's. So I'm taking the S to the center and then doing another one. So you see it's two S's on either side. And then all around, so this isn't dry, but all around I did just little dots around the dot. And then on top I drew the one. Now, if you're not super comfortable writing, you could use a marker to write whatever you want to write. Okay, there it is. So now I'm going to spray that sucker. I'm going to put it on a paper towel so I don't get my pearl everywhere. Now, ideally, if you're using the pearl that's canned, get all your cookies done. Don't spray one after the other. Put them all together, crowd them as much as you can so that you get the maximum use of your spray. Because when you spray, it goes everywhere. So if you're only spraying one cookie, well, it's all going on the paper towel here, it's wasting. But if I had all my cookies here, well, I would be maximizing my spray, right? Getting more bang for my buck. All right, let's see here. Hello, Sonia. I'm sorry, I don't speak. Brazil would be Portuguese, I think. I do not, sorry. You don't wanna be late. Others are bringing something on a Friday and you're talking about your boss day. Sorry, Sonia, I do not understand. Can I ask if uh, you have a baby in a teacup? Yes, I do. I do have a teacup. I did one with a little cat peeking out and I did a regular one. All right, so I'm just shaking it and then um, ideally, you either do it when the icing is wet, quickly done, so that you don't crack it, or you wait till it dries, or else the pressure can actually crack your surface icing. And I'm just gently misting the cookie. Now, I hadn't drawn the little uh, one, but you can see that pearl just brings it all to life. That pearl is great for Christmas, uh, for wedding stuff. I don't like to buy the silver. I find that it really limits you to what you can use it. The pearl makes a very nice um, silver and curls up any color. And if you in a pinch need to kind of uh, make a fake gold, you can spray it on the on the yellow and it will give it like a little bit of a shine, you know. Oh, thank you, Sally. Yes, you're able to understand. No problem. Thanks, Mary Jean. So um, I am using PME spray right now. The spray that comes in the bundles is the Wilton. They're essentially the same. The PME is hard to get and very expensive. So you guys can shop around, but PME is kind of like a high end of the cake supply world it's kind of i don't know, like the it's pricey stuff and so you know ideally if you're really like a pro and you're making and selling you get airbrush pearl and that would be more affordable than the can but if you're a hobby baker the can is really great and as you see works great makes really pretty cookie thank you very much thanks june these might be good for your grandkids if they're doing any kind of activity. Um, no, no, it doesn't taste anything. It, it uh, smells a little bit when you spray it, but it doesn't smell bad. It smells kind of like Swedish. It's not Swedish, but Swedish. And um, I like uh, some of the food colors have smell. Like I find pink smells a certain smell. So it's just like that's it. Thank you, Camille. So here, let's pop that together again here. There. 
is the trophy, the little football. I'm trying to visualize how I should put this on the screen. And then my helmet. Personally, I like the helmet dot sunken in more than the one that is piped on top. The thing about the one that's piped on top, though, is you can make an advance. So if you, let's say, are working on a set where you can make the little dots for the trophies, match them with the little dot on the helmet, and tie it all together. See? And like I said, the helmet can be any color. Well, it's pretty standard, and you can make the trophies gold, bronze, you can make them, you know. Uh, the tip, I, I suggest you use 14, 16. The one I use right now, see this 17, the other one that I use for the for this one here, I like it better. I find it better. This one here, where is it? Oh, no, 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 that's it. The 17 is the big one. This one here is a Teco. 16. See, it's, there's a difference between the 16 and the 17. I find the 17 is just that little bit too big. Thank you, Cynthia. So just a star tip, you know, just a star tip. Look for your star tip. That's it. You want texture just to give it a little bit of interest. Because the one color cookies, if you don't have like texture and things going on, you know, make it a little bit more. And then for the helmet, you have markers. A draw on there, pipe like a, a number, whatever. Thank you, Denise. I, I'm so glad that um, you find the, the teaching style like you like. You know, that's the thing. Like Sally was saying, she saw a picture of the trophies and she was saying, "Oh, they look hard." Well, they're not really if you break it down like this. You know, like we say, doable and bite size. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, Sally Ann, was I was I uh, lying when they look they look they're easier than they look. Thank you, Mary Jean. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. So on Tuesday, um, Amber's going to be on and she's launching her book. If you guys weren't aware, she's um, she's written a book, and so that's launching um, Tuesday. So she'll I don't know what she's going to do on Tuesday, talk about it or make a little tutorial. I have no idea, but she'll be on talking about that. So if you guys want to join um, on Tuesday and then on next Friday, I'm probably going to be working on some sort of a pumpkin in my head. There's like Halloween. That'll be probably the last one. I'm a cat. Cute, <laughs> cute um, username. Thank you, Sally. So thanks, you guys, for watching. So if you want to um, buy the supplies, you can get those at the Global Belly Shop. And if you want to put the live stream, it's added in a tip jar to the bio link. If you guys want to check that out. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you on um, probably next Friday. I don't know if I'll be on on Tuesday. It might be just 10 and over. So I'll see you guys then. And thanks for joining me. Bye.